So on the vlog a couple of weeks ago, I told you that I moved locations and I chose this building in particular for the parking garage. So I have this spot to play wall ball and I don't have to worry about getting within six feet of Kyle Hartzell for social distancing. All right, let's go inside. This is like an old school Rabel vlog. from the top. So the last time we put out a vlog, we were doing a shooting practice with Rob Pinnell, announcing that he was joining the entry draft for the PLO. We've since had our entry draft. We'll talk about that in a second. But in the subsequent days, I flew to New York for the Paul Rabel Foundation fundraiser, and then what seemed like all hell ensued. The coronavirus really began to evolve quickly in the United States, and we've taken on some major precautions at a state, local, and national level. So. Before we jump back into the vlog and talk about different things that we have going on this week and ways that you can potentially play lacrosse indoors, note to parents, tune out now. I wanna make sure that we all listen and adhere to the importance of safety and health precautions that are out there, that we're not only doing our job to protect ourselves and keeping ourselves healthy and safe, but more importantly, those that we're in touch with and those around the world. So things like social distancing, isolation, whether it's on your own or with your family members, they're calling that quarantining. I'll show you some examples of the way that I'm quarantining here in California. Making sure that you're washing your hands. I learned something just this week from my mom and following the different threads on Twitter about saying the ABCs while I wash my hand and thread my fingers this way and scratch my palms with soap and then even do this technique where you rub your thumb against your palm with both hands. That is properly cleaning your hands. And again, protecting yourselves and protecting others. That's the most important thing. And the more that we do that, the more likely we are to get back to a state of normalcy, which we all love and care for. And if you're like me, you care a lot about lacrosse and season two of the PLL. And by the way, I, I'm really sorry and feel for the seniors, especially in college, and frankly, all four classes at each of the universities that are participating, and not only spring ball at the D1 and 2, 3 level, but also the MCLA. The good news is that the NCAA has granted an additional year of participation for all four of those classes. There's some details that they have to iron out, but I know as a competitor, it's just really hard to have your season cut short. We'll find out too of the seniors that aren't gonna take their red shirt, which ones are gonna enter the PLL draft, which will be forthcoming. And that brings me to this last entry draft. The PLL had its entry draft two days ago. And for many of you that were tuning in across our Instagram, Atlas Lacrosse Club got Rob Pinnell, RP3. And for those of you who are wondering how the hell Atlas and number three were able to get Rob Pinnell, well, we also dug into the logic of Andy Copeland, who took Zach Courier one. You know, with an 18-person game day roster, you need guys who can play in and out of various roles, and I think Zach does that better than anybody. And Tim Sudan of Chrome, who took Jesse Bernhardt, number two. It was really important for us to go defense. We really had our sights set on Jesse Bernhardt being our guy. The good news is that Atlas doesn't have to worry about why they didn't take RP3, but you know who also isn't gonna forget? RP3. You guys know what I'm feeling? This is where I work during these days. It's exciting. I'll eat over there. Sometimes I uh, light a candle. It smells good. That's cool. Well, I've got my Peloton bike over here. I've been riding on Peloton a lot lately, and if you ride on Peloton, you can find me. I'm at Paul Rabel. We've got a 60-pound barbell, too, so I like to do some shrugs when I'm bored. You guys want to play some lacrosse? Ah, uh, but before we play lacrosse, let me show you what I have in my quarantine fridge. That's pasta we have from last night. This is non bread. It's really great. Hummus. I have a bunch of these protein shakes. These are ready-made meals from Fresh and Lean. This is faux chicken, so you guys know I'm vegan. Tofu, peppers, 
bunch of body armor water, Perrier, leave some wine, have some Red Bull. Oh, and over here we have oatly milk. Fantastic. We have Naked Green, trying to stay hydrated and healthy and COVID free. And then in here, vegan Lara bars. Boom. Bread, honey, peanut butter, a bunch of cereal, a bunch of other stuff. I'm eating like an animal right now, so I need to go to the grocery store more. All right, let's go practice. So when I was younger, I used to play lacrosse indoors a lot, and it used to aggravate my mom and my dad, but especially my dad because I broke a lot of windows. So for this edit, I'm not going to be throwing the ball against the window, although it's kind of like glass. Is my glass good for wall ball? Okay, well, let's assume that not everyone's glass is safe for wall ball. I'm going to show you some things that I worked on when I was younger, in particular indoors being able to cradle. Not everything in lacrosse is passing, catching, and shooting. A lot of the best players in the world are very sharp with the way they handle their stick. They call it your handle. So when I was in the house, I would practice a couple things. The first is sidewall stalls. The good news is if you screw it up, usually your house will stay in order. The second thing that I'll give you is practicing twirling your stick. For whatever reason, when I was younger, I used to think the best lacrosse players could do this. So I would just practice indoors trying to do this. And I think what I've learned is it really helps you with what I call rhythm. So being really comfortable with your stick in rhythm as you play. Because a lot of it is the way we're controlling our cradles, the way we're protecting our stick. If a defender chops us, having good rhythm, be able to snake the ball and stick past him. So I could always do this with my strong hand, and then I started working on it with my weak hand, which is far less coordinated than our strong hand. So if you can do this with your weak hand, you'll be in pretty good shape. And then that's a cradle that you actually see happening during games. Try to do this, and then relax. Let the ball do the work. Actually, there's a third drill. Usually, if you have a strong headboard, which I do not, on my bed, you can find a chair that has a good back cushion. This one's smaller, so what I would do is take a knee and just play catch. You can always work on feeling the ball come out of your stick, which is the best part of it. And I'm also working on ground balls catching that ball like a first baseman off of first bounce. All right, hopefully this worked. I don't remember how to record on my own. So, actually, you know what? Let me set this thing up. Fire toward the guest room. So for those of you that know or have done this at home, this is the real target practice. Good way to break a pillow in. For all the moms and dads at home, I'm sorry. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. I have one more thing I need to share with you about what's coming on this YouTube channel. Okay, here's what I want you guys to do. Comment below if you want Brett to do the vlog again or if you want me to self-quarantine. Because the OGs out there, like they say, if you know, you know. This channel was started mano a mano and now it's been taken over by Brett. Okay, now here's the real takeaway. During this time, the PLL will be working remotely. So we announced on our Twitter and our Instagram a message from my brother and CEO, Mike, that the office will be working remotely. We're taking care of our players to make sure should they need to, they can get access to COVID testing. We've temporarily suspended PLL Academy and we have more announcements as we learn more, not only in partnership with NBC, but Ticketmaster who hosts thousands of events every week to our friends at NBA and the NFL, as well as CAA and WME. So we will be ready, but in the interim, we're doing what we know best, and that is content. So on this channel, despite limited access to our production house, we will be playing back some games with my voiceover. So rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, one of the best features that I've seen him and ESPN do together is a series called Details, where he goes over from a basketball IQ why he and other players made certain moves. We're gonna try that on this channel in particular for the midfield position for shooters, dodgers, and feeders, and I'm gonna highlight why certain players, including myself and others, do certain things on the field, so hopefully it's educational. Hopefully you enjoy it, and we'll wrap around PLL content, and that is it for this vlog. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. See you soon.
Mm-hmm.